Welcome to Culture Shock. I'm Evan. And I'm Brent. What are we talking about today, Brent? Today we're talking about kimono and yukata, the traditional mm. Japanese clothing. Wow. Yeah, as you see here, very beautiful outfits, very colorful outfits. And a kimono is essentially, a, a relatively simple, it's a multi-layered robe. Hmm. Um, uh, and it, worn in multiple layers, secured with a, a sash called an obi. Hmm. That's just what kind of holds it together. Um, as with most things traditionally Japanese, they started in China originally. And then over around the 8th century AD, they transitioned over to Japan and became the standard garment. For, for everybody? Or? Pretty much everyone. And so here's the thing. Um, when you go back, way back, and you're dealing with clothing, it takes a lot of work to weave cloth. Mm -hmm. right? If you're starting from nothing, um, so cloth is expensive. And so you don't want to waste cloth. No. But if you're just making a tube of, of cloth and wrapping it around your body, it's a tube of it's cloth. It's hard to, hard to <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have to kind of fit it to people, which mm -hmm. is more difficult. A kimono consists of just four pieces of cloth, the front, the back, and the two sleeves. And the advantage mm. of that is that it's a very efficient use of cloth. Hmm. So you can take just one piece of, of cloth, cut it out, out into this kimono shape, and you get a very functional garment that uh, doesn't waste a lot of material. So the sleeves are separate? The sleeves are separate, yep. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's just that front piece, the back piece, and those, um, each of those sleeves makes an entire kimono. Now, originally there was another piece to this outfit. You'd wear your kimono, um, a couple of layers of kimono, and you'd have a, a, a skirt called a hakama. Hmm. And you still see this, um, or you used to see this, that um, uh, samurai would wear. So you know that skirt the samurai would wear? That's a hakama. Oh. And so that was a traditional part of uh, clothing. But it got dropped over time because you got this clothing on. You don't really need an extra piece of clothing on it. And, I mean, the, the kimono goes all the way to your, your ankles. Um, so the, the, the hakama was dropped over time, and then we got the, the very functional kimono that we have now. Wow. Yeah. Well, now, not everybody that I've seen wears a kimono. Has this become more of a traditional yeah. dress yeah. rather than standard practice, mm -hmm. uh, more of a formal? or Yeah, you won't see much of this in modern Japan. Folks no. will be wandering <laughs> around wearing this in modern Japan, more is the pity. Um, now, the, uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. One is um, just the modernization of Japan. You know, mm -hmm. as Western clothes became available, folks started, you know, going to those. But uh, there's another side of that. Um, two things, actually. The Great Kanto Earthquake of 1923 hmm. and the Nihonbashi Shirokiya of 1932. Uh, how, how did those come into well, affecting the kimono? <laughs> in the, uh, indeed. Um, you can't run in a kimono. Oh, yeah. oh, so if there's an earthquake mm -hmm. or a fire or a or fire, like that, you can't move very quickly. You can't quickly. move quickly, yeah. And so no. many people died in the Great Kanto Earthquake and other disasters like that. Mm. That actually, uh, there's a Japanese women, women's and children's uh, organization that promoted the use of Western clothes oh. over the kimono and basically said, we have to stop wearing the kimono because it's so dangerous. Safety for to sake. Wear. Yeah. <laughs> Sa safety clothing. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, well, you can imagine, you know, you're a little kid wearing this uh, this clothing, and while it is or trip or get caught or absolutely. just trying to move fast. To... Mm -hmm. Now, 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 is this a kind of outfit that the children could get into or an out of themselves? Or? For a simpler kimono, yes. Now, a, a traditional kimono could be up to twelve layers. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve layers. Now, you said there were four pieces. How does, mm. how do these layers come into play? So that would be four, four pieces as a layer, and then another layer. Of four another, pieces? Oh, yes. And four pieces, four mm -hmm. pieces. That's a lot of outfits. Yeah. Imagine wearing a, you know, a bathrobe on top of a bathrobe on top of a bathrobe, just all the way up. It would keep me warm in winter. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have a lot of trouble moving at that point, yeah. I kind of think. Yeah. And, and granted, that would be more for royalty. They need to move fast. Exactly. They have people to do that for them. <laughs> they just need to sit. And... Mm -hmm. But even back <laughs> then, you know, it was considered proper to wear many layers of kimono. It was oh. beautiful. You, know, you oh, can imagine, because yeah. um, it was not just on top of it, um, themselves. Uh, each layer would be slightly s uh, smaller than the, uh, than the next, so you get a, a layered effect. Oh, and so you can see very each tailored of those layers exactly. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah. it, it's absolutely gorgeous, but uh, not exactly practical in a mm. lot of ways. Much of art is that way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and you'll see here actually with this, um, this kid, it's traditional for kids to have these very colorful yukatas, very bright colors for their, their kimono, and that is the kimono there. While adults will have more somber colors, mm. more, more restrained colors. And when you get um, to uh, uh, older age, you'll get you know, dark blue colors and grays and things like that. Um, as as you get a, a kind of a more refined, elegant uh, uh, the approach, the more conservative mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. vibrant. Does do do seasons of the year affect the design and pattern? Is yes, that it does. You know, you're going to get yeah. different um, uh, different designs. You might have uh, a leaf pattern for the fall. You might have cherry blossoms for the spring. Whatever kind of works. Um, and of course, having those multiple layers has an advantage too, because you can kind of swap those out as well. Mm. And and the patterns generally seem to have one coherent design they're not yes. mix and match random but absolutely and a, a very nice kimono will have one unified design over the entire thing mm -hmm. so you will, and, and it, it's not literally a pattern on the cloth they will take a um a single color and then they will embroider or otherwise um, you know manipulate that that cloth to put a design onto it as a kimono Keeping the theme of the piping or design. Yeah, so you, you, you might get a dragon all the way over, you know, um, throughout the entire design that, uh, you know, that's, that's worked into how the entire thing uh, works. You might get, there's a famous um, kimono that is based off of a painting by, I think it's Hiroshige. And so they basically replicated it on the kimono. It's all these cranes, oh, wow. I think. Um, and so you can see, oh, there's that, there's that. And you kind of look around, oh, all the different pieces <laughs> of it are all represented on the kimono. Wow. So, so, so it sounds like uh, the kimono has grown w with the society as well, being able mm -hmm. to do different prints yeah. on the kimono. Mm -hmm. It's a very versatile uh, outfit in, in that sense. And again, the advantage is being an outfit that is um, uh, very standardized in that mm -hmm. sense. It allows folks to be more creative, to be able to just do, okay, um, you know, we know exactly the dimensions we're working with, given tailoring. And so we can figure out exactly how to represent different things on that. that Scale outfit. it, and it will fit appropriately. Mm -hmm. and so uh, with kimonos, you mentioned samurai wore a variation of this. Are there uh, kimonos for men as well? Ah, so um, men would wear kimono back in the day, um, but it's become more women's garment over time. Um, and of course, uh, the kimono itself is a, a, a fairly restrictive garment, so you see more yukata. So here's a good example of people wearing yukata, and you see this is, um, and you see there's only one layer there. Mm. So they're wearing underwear, obviously. Underneath it. <laughs> but um, uh, if you see that one layer, that's your uh, your your signal. That's a yukata, and uh, so that's a, a more simple garment, and, and it literally means bathing robe. Wow, so it's a bathrobe. <laughs> it's <literally laughs> a little bit different than my bathrobe, yeah. but then people would look at me funny if I went out in mine. <laughs> Well, that's the other thing, is that while it's literally called a, a bathing robe, it is more like casual wear. A casual um, wear style. So you could wear this style. out of the streets. That would be it's more acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially at, at an onsen or otherwise a, um, uh, you know, if you're in an environment that's more laid back, a yukata is going to be fine on the street. Hmm. Yeah. Well, next time I see a kimono, I'm going to be able to appreciate it more mm -hmm. as I look at the detail and the design and knowing some of the history about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if you go out to buy one, be aware. Um, they can be as cheap as $5 up to $10,000. As much as my money can pay for. Yeah. <laughs> Plus accessories, you know. Um, accessories. Oh, yeah, well, a lot of kimono will come with accessories designed for that kimono. So hair ribbons or um, purses, things along those lines you want to wear along with it. Hmm. Um, you know, everything gets nice and coordinated. So you mm -hmm. can spend a lot of money on a kimono or very little, depending on hmm. what you want to do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, I, I want to thank you for explaining all this to us. You and bet. this has been Culture Shock. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed this video, we have others. Check us out at geekarchaeologists.com.